This being said, let's do a bit of machine learning. So I've told you that one of the mo main classes uh, of algorithms we were going to work on uh, is uh, supervised learning. Um, so what we're going to do in the next uh, hour and a half or so is to learn how to formulate a supervised learning problem. Uh, that should be the easy part. Uh, and then we'll uh, dwell into some elements of uh, machine learning theory applied to uh, supervised uh, learning and in particular classification. Uh, and we'll talk about model complexity uh, because it's a theoretical concept, but it has, I mean, it has a lot of intuitive uh, uh, connections, let's say. I mean, you can also have intuitions about model complexity. And it's very important uh, for practical applications to understand those. So, uh, as I said, we will start with uh, supervised classification. And we'll start with binary classification. So binary meaning that we only have two classes. So the goal is to learn a class from examples. So I'll have a simple, very simple example. Once again, it's going to be in 2D because I only have two dimensions on uh, the board. So uh, we want to be able to uh, predict, given a car, whether it is a family car. Uh, so not a sports car uh, and not a poor student's <coughs> car. You know, the kind of cars that you can use to go <coughs> on trips with your family during the holidays with two children and a dog in the back or those kind of things. Um, so the input is going to be a representation of the car. And we're going to take a very simple representation, <coughs> which is two-dimensional. <laughs> with one variable which is the price and the second variable which is uh, the power of the car. And the output is going to be binary. So we'll have positive and negative labels. So positive means this is a family car, negative means this is not a family car. And this is how we're uh, always going to cast this kind of problems. So in mathematical notation, uh, we have a training set. So a training set is a set of cars that have been labeled as family car or not family cars. So for all these cars, we know their price and their power, which are the two dimensions that we say we were going to use. So we represent this training set X as a couple of, uh, so two vectors, so one is x, so x is two-dimensional. Uh, I, I haven't been using a specific notation to differentiate between vectors and scalars. It should be obvious from context. So here, uh, x is an example. So xi is one particular example. I'm using uh, uh, exponents here because I'm going to use indices to denote the dimensions. So x, uh, example xi has a dimension x1i, which is the price, and a dimension x2i, which is uh, the power. And the y's are the labels, and we have n uh, samples in the data set. And I'll try to keep to this uh, notation throughout uh, the course. So here, uh, yi is one if xi is uh, a family car, positive and zero if it's not. Um, and then we have data which is spread <coughs> this way in the space. So essentially expensive cars uh, with high power are sports cars, they're not family cars. And uh, cheap cars with low powers are uh, the car you buy uh, second hand when you're a student and you don't have money and then you don't do road trips with them because you're afraid they're going to fall apart on you on the road. Uh, so the family cars are in between. Okay. Uh, so again, this is the same data. So we want to learn a discriminant, that is to say a separating function that separates the family cars from the other cars, so that separates the blue points from the orange points on the slide. Okay. So we've said uh, rectangles. 
So we've, this means that uh, we have defined a hypothesis space. This hypothesis space is the space of uh, rectangles that are going to be potentially separating the blue points from the orange points. You can define those rectangles by saying, by saying that, uh, so positive examples, blue points, have their first dimension between P1 and P2, and the second dimension between E1 <coughs> and E2. So you're actually looking at price and power independently from one another, which you wouldn't do if you were drawing a circle, uh, which is why we're sticking to rectangles for now. Uh, so again, a uh, family car has a price between P1 and P2 and a power between E1, between E1 and E2. Uh, and C, so C again is a class of family cars. Uh, we believe that uh, C belongs to the set of all rectangles defined in this fashion. So how do we evaluate uh, our model? So if C is a true class, and H, which is here uh, in purple, is uh, the class we've just defined with, so we've chosen a P1 and a P2 and an E1 and an E2, the other way around, uh, based on some uh, rule, uh, based on the data. So there's a bit of overloading of notation <coughs> where I'm calling H both this rectangle and the function that labels a new point. So I'm labeling a new point. Uh, so if I put a point here, I'm going to label it as positive because it's within the rectangle. So h of x is going to be 1. If I put a new point here, I'm going to label it as negative, negative because it's outside h. And then I'm making errors when uh, I, well, wherever h and c don't match, right? Uh, so the empirical error on a new, well, sorry, on the training set, actually, uh, is uh, defined by uh, the number <coughs> of points that are uh, in H but not in C or conversely. So this notation is one of many direct notations. It means it's 1 if h of xi is different from yi. So h of xi is my prediction for xi, and yi is uh, my true value for yi. Uh, and it's 0 if they are the same value, because I'm not making an error. Um, so one additional comment. Uh, we talk a lot about, we'll <coughs> see those not uh, notions again, but the points I've labeled as positives when they weren't positives are called false positives, and the one that I've labeled negatives when they weren't negatives are called false negatives. And you also have true positives and true negatives according to the same logic. Um, so the question we have is, uh, so we've defined a hypothesis space, capital H, which is a set of rectangles uh, that are aligned with the axes. Uh, so, uh, as we've defined before, uh, the x dimension was the horizontal dimension between, uh, I forgot, the price was horizontal, so P1 and P2, and the vertical dimension between E1 and E2. Um, so, we want to choose H in such a way uh, that it works well on new data. So, on the data I've shown you, you can draw many rectangles that work uh, for the data I've drawn, right? So now the question is which one of those rectangles are we going to choose? So what do we want? Uh, so we want H to work well on new data. And so we have two uh, sort of extreme uh, possibilities for this. One is to draw a rectangle that is tied to the positive examples. Um, and we call this the most specific hypothesis all the points that are in between those that you know for sure are negative and the one that you know for sure are positive will be considered negative. You are not taking many risks into mislabeling uh, something as a positive. Uh, conversely, you can do the most generic hypothesis about the positive class, 
which is to draw the rectangle uh, which is tight to the negative example, so the black one. As you've seen uh, here, the real uh, C from which I have drawn my data uh, is in between those two rectangles. So where do you think? So I don't, imagining you don't know C, you only know the blue points and the orange points, you can draw uh, this, <coughs> I don't know what color that is, red, purple, uh, specific hypothesis. You can draw the black uh, generic hypothesis. Where should you put, where do you want to put uh, your rectangle? You want to put your rectangle exactly in between those most specific and those most generic uh, possibilities. And the distance between these uh, two is called the margin. Uh, so we'll talk about margins again a lot, especially when we talk about support vector machines. And uh, choosing H between uh, the most specific and the most uh, generic uh, <coughs> examples maximizes this margin. Uh, so I've told you before, you can draw a lot of rectangles that are between the specific set and the generic set, uh, and that have all the blue points inside them and all the orange points outside of them. Uh, all those rectangles are called consistent hypotheses. They are consistent with the data. Uh, if you use those as uh, a discriminant function, uh, they will classify your training data perfectly. Uh, other word of vocabulary, uh, the set of consistent hypotheses, for, so which is a set of hypotheses from which you want to pick your, your own, is called uh, the version space. So the set of hypotheses was all the rectangles that are aligned with the axis, and the version space is all the rectangles that are aligned with the axis and have all the blue points inside and all the orange points outside.